All right, it's good to be with you guys. It's Tuesday. Um, one thing that I'm going to be changing for the last few weeks is that Mondays will be the due dates now. I thought that, you know what, nobody wants to be doing homework or work on Sundays, especially not now. So feel free to take time on Sundays to relax. Don't scurry through work um, and rush to get it done. Um, yeah, I think it's just a better idea. I think during the school year, Sundays made sense when we were all kind of there at the university. But now that things have changed, I think Mondays are the better day to complete uh, our projects. Um, that being said, also, just a quick word on just the process. And, like, you know, I think that it's important to mention that this stuff shouldn't take one sitting to create and to get done. And if it is, then it's not good enough. All right? Might sound slightly harsh, but you know, I'm just I'm speaking from experience and from the heart because I want you guys to be good at this. I want you guys to achieve your career goals, and that's the reason why I'm here. I want you guys to be my competition um, when you graduate. So, you know, take take your time with this stuff. Do your your due diligence in um, doing research, drafting things, maybe having different renditions and ideas. But you know, I just want to say that because it is easy to notice when you don't take the time. And as someone that's grading homework, uh, I don't want to have to notice that and grade um, knowing that. So just something to keep in mind, especially as you. Keep growing as creative people and as graphic designers. I care about you guys, and I just want to um, make sure that we all have good habits, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> my screen's got some infographics on them. If you don't know what an infographic is, oh, I had notes. Where are they? There we go. To me, and I wanted to kind of write this out because I think it's, it's an important definition. Um, to me, what an infographic is, and you've heard the term, it's, it's been a hot term for a while, and it will be for a while, it's taking information of any kind, and you as a creative designer gets to make that information more dynamic, and readable, and digestible, and visual, and interactive. And I'll give you some examples of what I'm talking about. But the point of an infographic design is essentially just to make information more attractive to get a reader to stop and stare for a bit. And in so doing, also kind of explore that, that information, of course. So that's that's essentially what we're doing. And there's some examples here. Um, now, for you guys, I'm not going to be able to show you the entire library of good infographic design. But do your own searches. You know, go to Google, go to Pinterest, go to, in, you know, Envato or wherever... Uh, you guys typically like to explore and search and see, you know, what templates are out there, what are some styles that are being applied. And, you know, I think that's important to get that also under your belt, and, you know, that research, that visual research. But here's some examples I'll share with you. Uh, they all vary. I'm going to point to this one because it kind of emphasizes the point that I just made uh, where you're taking information and making it more visual. So this is the history of the internal combustion engine visualized. Think about it, guys. It, unless you're super into engines, would this be something that you typically would read through if it was just an article? My guess would be probably not. So the goal is to make that information more visual, more interactive, more dynamic. Those are three good words. And this timeline has been actually made into an actual timeline, which, oh my gosh, makes sense. And, you know, there's some photos and stuff, but... In, in a basic sense, the, the kinds of things you're seeing design-wise in this are things that we've worked on this semester. It's space, text, and just being very, very generous with how you're using each of those things. And, of course, images make uh, a huge difference, and I'll talk about those near the end. But you can see like how this becomes much more interesting because you actually get to see how that has evolved over time. And that's the angle that this artist decided to take. Uh, a, a good example, too, is taking an athlete that you like, that you've been a fan of, and maybe just using this kind of 
interface to show and demonstrate statistics and achievements and of course a photo of them or a drawing of them it doesn't matter um, and of course the colors are important you gotta choose colors that make sense and when you're when you're talking about the Lakers those are the only two that do so that's another popular example of an infographic treatment but the cool thing is you get to design in the style that you want and in the style that you think fits the content that you've chosen. This is a good example of that. Now, one thing I'll say too is that 90% of these are gonna be illustrative, but you don't have to choose illustration as the base. I mean, this, uh, this Shaq one, for example, had some basic vector shapes that they probably drew, like of the trophies and things, but adding bars and making like those little charts and those circle charts are simple. Those are simple vector shapes you can do in any of our three programs. And so those are simple. They don't take a whole lot of labor. And once you've made one, you can make a ton. And they're repeated a lot. And I want that to kind of just encourage you because you don't have to be a huge illustration person to be good at this. You know, I think it's a good chance for you to practice your illustration skills and maybe try some different things out. But you don't have to. Like that, the, the timeline one that we just saw was basically just a bunch of photos. Yeah, there were some treatments done to them probably in Photoshop, but that's the primary image um, style that was in that design were from, you know, photos. So don't think you have to be an amazing illustrator, but I also do think it gives you a chance to be patient and maybe draw some cool things and make that your your thing here. I don't know. It's up to you. There was one that I liked quite a bit. I'm gonna point out one that I think is super cool. And honestly, it's just preference a lot of times with these things because, you know, everybody has different design preferences and styles. But this is a design uh, that I love because it's a illustration style that I've used quite a bit, um, using gradients and basic vector shapes to kind of, um, you know, uh, create dimension and things like that. And I love how like, they use the space of the ocean to create that that area for those different callouts and statistics. Again, good use of space too, good balance between how big titles are. And uh, I think it's just very clean. And it keeps the theme all the way through because there's fish down here, it gets darker as it goes south. So I just love that one. That's just, that's probably my favorite in this spread. But it's gonna take some research to kind of see what you like and what you might like to design in. And it's totally fine with me if you see something that you are like, wow, that's awesome. I wanna kind of try that um, and figure out how to create that and see if it works for my content. I'm not gonna think you're some, some kind of design thief for practicing. Just wanna point that out too. Last thing I'll say about these is that there also is a fence you can cross and putting too much in it. I think that you can definitely, especially when you're working in a grid, make it just way too full. And I think there's some examples here, let me try to find one, where it's just too much information going on. Yeah, this seems to be way too cluttered to me. Um, and so, and this is really cool because there's a lot going on here, but the way that they use space, you can, I mean, you can see why it works because there's enough empty space to make it breathable and livable in that space. Um, but I do think if you start filling that grid too much and yeah, and just making it too congested, then that's not a good thing, not a good idea. So that should also encourage you because that also means you don't have to overload your design with statistics that you have to go out and find or, or nothing. Okay. So important stuff there. I can show you guys these all day and there's so many different cool ways to, to visualize information and they go beyond just that standard layout of statistics and uh, working in the grid. You can do anything that you want to. Something clever to represent information that, that, you know, that you're wanting to design into this project. Uh, the most important thing is doing it in a way that makes sense, at least, at least a little sense, right? Um, but is also very clear in what it's trying to, to show. I mean, has to be related, has to accurately show that information. And so, um, you know, 
we can be clever and go crazy, but those principles are foundational and you have to make sure that it's accurate and a good representation of the content that you're working with. This, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> got something in my, my throat there. Um, this might seem slightly scary because it seems like a lot of work, right? It seems like there's a lot of different things you have to do, elements you have to build. Um, and so knowing that, you know, this is going to be a process. And I'm, you know, I, I want to see what you guys can do in a, in a timeline that I'm going to give you, which is very similar to the usual. But we'll do one of these. Then we'll look at them and we'll talk about how we can build off of these and make them better. How we can maybe quicken the process. How we can uh, apply some shortcuts to creating our infographic. So don't be so, I guess, discouraged by, yeah, it looks like, it looks like there's a lot you might have to layer in and some things you might have to, some you know, extra steps you haven't considered before in other projects. But um, this is going to be a good a good project because it involves new kinds of steps and sometimes doing something that takes a little bit longer is really great practice okay so don't be discouraged by the fact that yeah maybe there's there's more here like there are more elements here than you know the last thing that we did which was the article the principles are the same but I want you guys to be encouraged by the fact that you get to decide what you want to design. The content is totally up to you. And you also get to decide what style you want to utilize to make this come to life. Because, you know, if I had those two, uh, if I had those two things as part of my daily design work where I uh, currently I'm, am employed, I would go crazy. I would have so much fun. It would be like a design playground. Uh, but, you know, Sometimes there are parameters, and in my case, there are quite a few. So take that and run with it while you can. It can be anything that you want. It can be in any style that you want. But, of course, there are parameters that we have to uh, sort of lay out for this, and I'm about to get to those. So I hope you're encouraged by the fact that you get to do pretty much anything that you want to for this. Something you're passionate about. Movies, sports, writers, um, pets animals, um, environmental stuff, anything. Because there's information that should be shared that's embedded in anything and everything. And it's your job to extract that and visualize that in this project. So this is the general, these are the only two things that I've written down as requirements for this, for this particular project, okay? So design this in a uh, 11 by 17 inches sized sheet. It can be portrait or it can be landscape, whichever works best for what you're hoping to do with it. But let's all do it in the same size, okay? Second is basically just what I described a bit ago as what the definition of an infographic is, which is basically make sure that it provides a visual representation a dynamic visual representation of the information that you select. And you get to decide what information that is and how you go about representing that. I think that's exciting. So that's it. You're creating an infographic in that size using whatever program that you want, Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator, and exporting that to being a JPEG image or a PDF, whichever is easiest for you. Um, and this is, yeah, so it's up to you. Uh, make sure the content is relevant and accurate. I, I want it to be, I guess that's a third thing. Make sure it's real information. That's also something that I want to make clear. Um, but um, that's basically it. You're deciding how to represent this visually in an infographic format with the same flow that you'll find in many of these. And titles are also important. Don't forget to put a title in there. And maybe subtitles as they're needed. So text structure is important too. Um, but exercise the design uh, styles that you love or explore new ones if you so choose to, okay? If you want to do more in Illustrator and want to just kind of practice making icons and drawing simple shapes or doing 
massive illustrations, like in backgrounds. Man, you can do whatever you want for this. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I think this is exciting. And again, it might seem daunting, but with anything that we do, I realize the weight of the work, uh, the fact that it's new, uh, and the fact that it's your first try. And we're going to use that, see what you've built, see what you've designed, and build on that. Um, and uh, take it as far as we can until uh, our time is up this semester, okay? So this is a first chapter in this module. Um, and I want you to go to that module too to see a list of items that might help you, including this video to reference the assignment. And also one extra thing that I'm adding to this week is that I'm going to put a discussion in embedded within uh, this process that it's not going to be a discussion discussion, but I want you to share some of the ideas you're thinking of doing for this project in that discussion. So you know, I got to thinking as students, and, and I was thinking back to when I was a student, having some affirmation that, you know, that that is a good idea. You should do that. And that was useful for me. It definitely built my confidence. And I think that sometimes if we're not able to share our ideas beforehand, we don't know for sure if it's even worth doing. And then that kind of shakes confidence a little bit. So uh, that's something that I should have thought of a while ago, but we're going to start implying that now. Better late than never, I always say. Um, and uh, so look for that discussion. I want everyone to share uh, w at least one idea, the path that they're going to be heading down, or if they're kind of unsure, a few different options. Okay, that's it. So that's all for now. Infographics, okay? First week, we're going to try to make one, and it's up to you what you want to make and how you want to make it, but um, really kind of getting the essence of this project of what an infographic is, is the most important part here. And let's see what you guys can do. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm sure that there'll be some things we can look at to improve things for the next time. And uh, yeah, this will be a fun few weeks. So don't worry about it. It's going to be great. You guys are going to make some awesome stuff. I can't wait to see it. And if you have questions, as always, but you guys never do, reach out to me and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Take care and we will talk very, very soon.